my name is Dr. Deshawn. In this video, we're going to take a look at Taylor polynomial expansion. We use Taylor polynomials to give another representation to our transcendental functions. We can take sine function and cosines and write them as polynomials. We can take logarithms, exponential functions, and we can write them as a series of polynomials. I've always been so fascinated by this topic where we can just take sines and cosines and exponential functions and logarithms and inverse trig and everything else. We can just, we can write them as polynomial functions, infinitely many, and give that representation of the transcendental function. So let's look at our example today. We are going to take e to the negative x and we're going to set it at zero and we're going to go out to the fifth derivative, okay? So if you look at, here's the polynomial expansion where you're going to utilize the function, the derivatives, where it's centered at, factorials. I mean, there's a lot of pieces to this, um, to this formula here. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to write e to the negative x. We're going to write that as a series of polynomials. We're just going to go out to the fifth uh, derivative for this though. So when you are uh, expanding a transcendental function using Taylor polynomial. First thing you want to do when you're starting is let's go ahead and list the derivatives. We want to go out to n equals 5, so that means that we want to go out to the fifth derivative. So let's take a look. So I'm usually going to write the function down, okay? So our function is um, e to the negative x, and so we want to go out to the fifth derivative, okay? So let me just list them here. We're going to have the first derivative, and we're going to have the second. We're going to write all this out. All right, we're going to deal with the third derivative, and then we're going to deal with the fourth derivative. So anything bigger than three, you write the number in parentheses like this, and then our fifth derivative, write the number in parentheses. This is the proper notation for your derivatives. So let's go ahead and find our five derivatives here. So e to the negative x is the function. The first derivative is bring the whole e to the negative x down times the derivative of the exponent, so negative e to the negative x. Second derivative, you're going to take negative e to the negative x times negative 1 derivative of the exponent. That brings you back to e to the negative x. Third derivative, e to the negative x times negative 1, so negative e to the negative x. Fourth derivative, negative e to the negative x times negative 1, so back to e to the negative x. And finally, fifth derivative, e to the negative x times the derivative of the exponent negative 1, so negative e to the negative x. And here are the five derivatives. Next thing we want to do is let's go ahead and plug in where it's centered. This one's at centered at 0. Okay, so centered at zero, so we're going to plug in zero to the function and each of the five derivatives. So let me just kind of sketch this out. We're going to take the, each of the derivatives, and remember that anything bigger than the third derivative, you write that number in parentheses for your proper notation. All right, and so let's plug in. So when we plug in zero, any number raised to the zero power is one. All right, and then this is going to be a negative number raised to the zero power, so negative one raised to the, so this is a, e to the zero, this is negative e to the zero, and then back to e to the zero, back to negative e to the zero. So here are the coefficients that we will need, all right? And we are going to, so we want to take e to the negative x, write it as a series of polynomials. So let's write our formula out that we need for this example, okay? So we want to write our Taylor polynomial, our n is five, so we're going out to the fifth derivative um, of x, okay? So for this problem right here, we're going to have, well, so we're going to have f of zero, aren't we? And then we're going to have f prime of 0 times x minus is 0. I'm not going to write the x minus zeros in here. C is 0 for this problem, okay? And then we're going to have the second derivative evaluated at 0 over 2 factorial times x squared. We're going to have our third derivative um, evaluated at 0 over 3 factorial. That's multiplied by x to the third, x minus 0 to the third, all right? And then we have in parentheses, all right, our fourth derivative evaluated at 0 over 4 factorial. Um, x to the fourth, and we have our fifth derivative um, in parentheses um, of zero, okay, so we're good. and then over five factorial x to the fifth. So here is our specific formula for this problem since we're going out to n equals five. Let's make our substitutions, okay, and remember what we're doing is we're, we're approximating what e to the negative x is with these po po uh, polynomials here, okay? So what do we have when we make our substitutions? f of zero is one. Okay, f prime of zero is in negative one times x, okay? Plus, second derivative of zero, that's back to positive one over two factorial, that's times x squared. All right, third derivative, that's at negative one over three factorial times x cubed, okay? Um, back to positive one over four factorial um, x to the fifth, uh, x to the fourth, sorry, x to the fourth. And then finally, that's negative one here for this coefficient, so negative one over five factorial, that's multiplied by x to the fifth. 
All right. So let's go one more step to simplify. Now, what we're doing here is we're given an approximation. This is an approximation for e to the negative x in terms of polynomials that we're using out to the fifth derivative of polynomials. So what do we have here? We have one minus x, okay? And then this is a positive x squared over two factorial is two times one, so that's two, okay? Minus x to the third over three factorial, three times two times one factorial is six, okay? All right, plus you have x to the fourth over four times three times two times one, that's 24, minus, and then x to the fifth over five times four times three times two times one, and there's 120, all right? So here is our polynomial expansion for e to the negative x centered at the, at zero, at x equals zero, okay? Um, and this is what the polynomial expansion looks like. This is what it looks like, okay? All right, so now if you want to cover exactly e to the negative x, you would actually have to have infinitely many terms, right? Okay, so let's actually look at uh, graphing calculator and see what this does, okay? So let's look at a graphing calculator. I'm going to pull that up right now, and I'm going to sketch the graph over here. So here's my y-axis, here's my x-axis, all right? So let's go ahead and we'll sketch e to the negative x so you can see what e to the negative x looks like. And then let's sketch this, this polynomial that we generated. So let's go ahead and grab a, if you have a graphing calculator, just you know, to take a look with me. I'm using the TI-89 graphing calculator here. So let's just go ahead and take a look. I'm gonna hit home screen. I'm gonna go to y equals, all right? And so here's my y equals. And so let's go ahead and um, I'm gonna go ahead and type in y1. I'm gonna put my transcendental function in. So I'm gonna put e, uh, I'm going to type in my e and then to the negative x power, okay? So I'm going to put the transcendental function in. I'm putting that into y e, y1, okay? You see it there? And then for y2, I'm going to put, let's put that polynomial. What did we get? We have 1 minus x, okay? And then we have plus um, x raised to the second power, all right, over 2, all right? And then we have minus, and that's going to be x raised to the third power uh, over 6, okay? And then we have plus all right, and we have x raised to the fourth power, all right, over 24, and then finally minus, we have x raised to the fifth power, and that's over 120, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and type that into y2. Do we have all that in there, okay? So, um, so let's see what we have. Let me, let's make sure it typed in okay. So you look at your y1 and you have the transcendental function e to the negative x, and then look at y2, one minus x, plus x squared over two, minus x to the third over six, plus x to the fourth over 24, and then just to make sure we typed it in right, minus x to the fifth over 120, yeah, okay? So there it is, okay? So you've got your, your curves in here. So let's go ahead and I'll do a, a zoom, I'll do number four for getting a standard window. So the first graph that's in here is your, this is your um, e to the negative x graph, okay? So there's e to the negative x, and it's busy still, so we're waiting to, we're waiting for the transcendental, or for the polynomials to come in here, let's see. So, and then there's your polynomial graph, okay? So you see the e to the negative x graph, and you see what the polynomial graph did, okay? So let me go ahead and sketch on the, the board what we just saw here, all right? So we saw e to the negative x, Okay, so our e to the negative x came in like this, okay? So this is our y equals e to the negative x, okay? So this is our transcendental function, all right? What about our polynomial approximation, right? Well, the zero's here, okay? So zero's here, so centered at zero, it's kind of right on target, centered at zero, right? But yeah, and then it broke away, okay? So we have, you know, we, we have, um, you know, we only have these this many terms, right, to our polynomial. So if you want your polynomial expression to cover the entire domain of e to the negative x, and well, you know, the more terms you have, the more of the domain of e to the negative x you're going to cover. So you would actually need infinitely many terms, okay? Once you, if you have infinitely many terms, then you can actually represent e to the negative x, okay? And how do you represent infinitely many terms, okay? If we wanted to represent infinitely many terms, we would need we would need to set up what are we doing with these uh, terms here we're setting up um, we need to set up a Riemann sum because we're taking these terms and we're adding them together okay adding and subtracting but you're combining them all right 
let's say that we're going to start with n equals zero and go to infinity and what do we have here okay what do we have if you look at it it's an alternating series positive to negative to positive to negative okay so you need a negative one to the n power that's going to give you the alternating plug in zero gives you a positive first term plug in one to negative second term and so on all right what else do we have in here the um Power on the x's goes from 0 to 1 to 2 to 3 to 4, so that's going to be represented as x to the n. And then in the denominator, you have 0 factorial, 1 factorial, 2 factorial, 3 factorial, etc. Okay? So if you wanted to have, instead of an approximation, because we only have a few terms, if you wanted to actually write your um, exponential as a power series, if you actually wanted to know what your transcendental function is looking like when you write it as infinitely many uh, polynomials, then you would probably need to set it up as a power series, okay? So, but that might be a little bit extending uh, with, this, with this video that we want to talk about with Taylor polynomials. Anyways, um, it's, this is just such a fascinating topic that these mathematicians, Taylor and McLaren, when uh, C is zero, it's uh, also known as, so, but these mathematicians, in their minds, they just, uh, they came up with ways of taking transcendental functions and writing them as a series of polynomials. So, back in older days when you didn't have the technology that we have today, uh, using the polynomials was a great way to approximate uh, trig functions at certain values. I mean, we would use the polynomials uh, a lot of times to do those approximations. So, anyways, this is how the definition works, okay? So, this is how you would begin with taking your... Um, transcendental functions and writing them as a series of polynomials. I hope you're fascinated by the minds of these men like I am. So anyways, um, thank you so much for watching. If these videos do help, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe. I would appreciate that. Okay. Thank you very much. Whew. Thank you.